But uh, I consider these hearings very important. Uh, a few weeks ago, we had hearings on the Federal Reserve's relationship to the unemployment problem. And the Fed has been given two mandates, one to keep low uh, unemployment, and uh, they haven't done a very good job. And the other is to uh, maintain price stability. And uh, the evidence is mounting that uh, they haven't been doing a very good job with maintaining price stability either. Um, most people refer to rising prices as inflation, and that's the conventional wisdom. But many of us uh, concentrate on things other than just rising prices and seeing rising prices as a symptom of the basic problem, which means that when a money supply is increased, the value of that currency goes down, and inevitably it will lead to rising prices, and uh, unfortunately not uniformly, which means that some people suffer uh, more than others. But the one thing that is done when prices rise is that uh, a lot of scapegoats are found. This has been traditional throughout history. Matter of fact, as long ago as uh, four, uh, 40 centuries, 4,000 years ago, the very first known price controls occurred in, uh, in ancient e Egypt. And uh, they put on price controls because prices are going up and they don't want to deal with the real issue, which is the monetary issue. And that's a modern phenomenon, too. The United States has done this during wartime periods, three wars in the uh, 20th century, as well as another time in the 70s, saying that if we can just control prices, we will take care of our problem. So they're always looking for blames for the rising prices. Sometimes it's energy. In the 70s, it was energy and boycotts caused hot rising prices. Even today, the Middle East crisis is causing prices to go up, and it does have an influence, but it's not the, the whole, whole cause. Uh, any type of crisis will uh, contribute to rising prices. But sometimes labor is blamed for the inflation of prices, and sometimes it's the weather. Sometimes the blame is placed on the speculators. You know, once uh, uh, prices start rising, well, it's the speculators are doing it. They're buying too much stuff, and they're hoarding, and, and they become the scapegoats. Also, business people, when they make profits, they can be accused of contributing uh, to, to the price inflation. And sometimes we just blame foreigners for not uh, managing their currencies quite well and causing our prices to go up. But one of the most bizarre uh, arguments by uh, the conventional wisdom of those at the Federal Reserve and other places is that it's excessive growth. We're having too much growth these days, and therefore we have to slow it up. And literally, that's what they do. If they have an inflationary period, and they're concerned about rising prices, they think, well, if we just kill the economy, yeah, it will, you know, decrease demand and you will have price adjustments, but that's a heck of a way uh, to, to solve the problem, which is a, which is a monetary problem. Uh, but growth in itself doesn't cause higher prices. If you have a healthy economy, you're more likely to lower prices with excessive growth. I mean, we had tremendous growth in the electronics industry, te telephones and computers and TVs. In spite of the monetary inflation, we still saw prices drop. So this, this whole idea that you have to slow up the economy in order to keep prices down, in order to stimulate growth of the economy, all you have to do is print money. Uh, I, I think people are starting to realize that it's a hoax and, and it's, uh, it's coming to an end. Uh, the, the, the uh, d definition of inflation by many of us is, that is the increase in the supply of money. Mises, the great Austrian economist, uh, argued this case clearly. And I used to think it was just semantics, but he argued that it was more than that. It was deliberate so that we in charge, with the monetary people in charge, didn't want to address the subject of money and why uh, they, they are responsible uh, rather than these other, other issues. But I consider this very, very important because it's so unfair. You know, if, if governments and central banks increased money, prices went up and wages went up and profits went up all equally, I guess no big deal, you know, but why do it if that's what's happening? But what happens, though, is some people benefit at the expense of others. And I, I think it is a reasonable assumption to say, which many have said in the free market school, is that if you destroy a currency, uh, you will destroy the middle class. A sound currency encourages the middle class. And 
I believe that the inflation of prices when prices go up are most damaging to the poor and low middle income people because they suffer the consequences much more so than those who can protect themselves and therefore it is a tax on the poor and the middle class they tend to lose their jobs and get to higher prices so to me it's very very important that we address this subject and now i would like to yield